Morning, George. Hey, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm making it all right. What about you? Well, you know, if I figure out what the right time is, I mean, I keep forgetting that you guys in Bowling Green are an hour behind. Yeah, we're on the right time. You're on the wrong time. <laughs> oh, Carl. Hey, uh, I want to take advantage of an opportunity this morning. I know you're a busy man with, uh, with uh, the end of summer and the beginning of fall. Uh, to talk about a couple things. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your, uh, your background. Uh, how you all decided to get into the business? Talk about your 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 uh, term with the uh, uh, the Niker Group. Of course, that that convention is coming up here next month, which is exciting. Absolutely. And then talk about that exciting marketing opportunity you had here a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, that was pretty cool. So uh, how, why did you get in the ice cream business, my friend? I think Deborah and I lost our mind. <laughs> We were we grew up on a dairy farm, and that's that's pretty well all we knew. And um, uh, Deborah had a, a sewing shop, and that was very successful. Matter of fact, so successful, she had to stop it because it was working her to death. And so, uh, of course, she was a full time mom and right. helped on the farm whenever I needed her. And uh, uh, in uh, 2001, we had a sale where we sold a bunch of cows. And at that time, we really started thinking, now, how are we going to make ends meet right. with poor cows and with milk prices like they are? Right. And uh, we wanted to process our own milk. That was a dream that we had. And we went around to research it. Uh, we saw people making ice cream, and they seemed to be the happiest people in the world. And, yeah. you know, we said, we want to be happy all the time, just like those ice cream people. <laughs> Well, it is exciting because in, in, in the milk fluid business, my, fa my father was in the processing business. My uncle, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to you, he, uh, you know, he milked about 400 head of Guernsey's, Holstein's. Uh, wow. And, you know, and, and having visited, you know, just, it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. It's just, it just wore every, wears everybody out. It, my, it does, George. And, and the difference between them and me, they were smart enough to get out. Well... <laughs> I, I don't know if they got out or if they wore out. <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I remember having the pleasure to meet you and your lovely wife a number of years back after you had already, I think, visited Penn State, uh, the school, to learn how to make ice cream. And uh, I remember that day when I met the two of you, you were just so excited about your new venture here. We were. And there's a little story behind that, isn't there, George? What happened was is we had kind of put some feelers out to some flavor companies because we had absolutely no idea what we were getting ready to get into. Didn't know what we were doing. Right. And out of the out of the three people or the three companies that we contacted, there was only one that felt that it was necessary to stop by on their way through town and to say hello. And George, you probably don't realize it, but you really gave us a sense of we can do this. When you came to our place and you sat down with sat down with us and we had so many questions you answered them so politely and i know they were questions that you'd heard so many times and you just wanted to strangle us but you didn't and uh you were one of the most kindest people that helped us when we needed help the worst so i, I want to say thank you so much for being that friend for us from the beginning well, you're very welcome, and you know you've turned this interview around. This is about you and your wife, but oh, that's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, as you as you as you said to me before, you know the challenges that you've gone through the last many years. Uh, it's amazing how you will endure the hardships because you love what you're doing. You George, know? that's very true. Um, the thing about it, what you have to realize is, is if if you if you talk to many farm families, dairy farm families especially, it's a it's a way of life. Right. It's something that you love to do. It's 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 a lifestyle that you enjoy raising your kids by. And there is I'm not going to say it's the best, but I'm going to say there's not many that would be any better than be able to work with your children as they're growing up, sensing them, teaching them responsibility and, right. and how to that there's something bigger than us. And when you take on to be a dairy farmer, you are responsible for those cows. Yes. And that's why it frustrates me when I see people that really don't know what they're talking about, have never stepped foot on a dairy farm, and they seem to know all the answers about what we need to do. And uh, let me assure you, I know what I need to do. I don't always get it done, 
but our our main goal is to make sure those cows are taken care of right, right. and that we do that we're good stewards of the land do you think that in part is what prepared you to do your next venture the ice cream store george that is that is exactly right yeah. because we we're we're people we're, we're we're people, people. We, right. we love to meet people. We talk to, love to talk to people. I would get so mad at my dad. He would, whenever we'd be milking and, and he would go out to talk to somebody. I'm like, well, let's get the work done. We can talk to people like, and, and then as we got the dairy barn started, it was always so cool to see my dad who was very for this new venture, right. uh, would go out on the front porch and he would be sitting there eating a quart of ice cream. And I go out there and check on him and he's talking to somebody. So I go back 15 minutes later and he's still sitting there eating ice cream and he's talking to somebody else. And I go back 15 minutes later and he's talking to somebody <laughs> else. And so I hate to say that I have become my father because I absolutely enjoy talking to people. I enjoy meeting new people. And now with it being a business, right. That's good for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh and you bring something to the table. I, I find that uh, in today's challenges uh, that everybody has to deal with, uh, and there's so many different ones, but I mean, when, when you serve a scoop of ice cream, I don't know, I'm sure you don't, but I remember my mom and dad said, there's never a, never a sad face that turns around with a scoop of ice cream. Everybody seems to be happy for the moment. That's, that's exactly right. Okay. Deborah says it so well. She said, the reason we got into the ice cream business because ice cream is a happy food. Yes. And as long as you wait on the people in a good way, uh, they're going to be happy. We, we have an ice cream flavor called Wow Now Brownie Cow. And I love that ice cream because people cannot ask for it without smiling. <laughs> and half the battle is won when they're already smiling when they come to your life. Well, that's, that's, that's certainly an exciting opportunity in, in your background. It's just, I said, you know, it prepares you for what most people think is a tough business. Uh, but, you know, you're coming from a tougher business to a, a tough business, but how did you get involved in the uh, the Niker Group and, and in your term of, of, as a president? Uh, my daughter, Jessica, okay. um, felt like it was our second. We started the business in October of 2003, and I think uh, our first uh, Niker was 2004 in Orlando, if I'm not mistaken, and she thought it would be a good thing for us to do. So my daughter, Jessica, and I, after she got off work, I believe it was on Tuesday evening or something like that. She and I drove to Orlando that night. Okay. And got in there the next morning uh, in time for the for the for the festivities. Um, I'll never forget Dick Warren. I love that man to the to the soul. He yes. was uh, he was fantastic, and and he made you feel like that you were important. Yes, he did. And I was I was absolutely nobody and starting an ice cream business in Kentucky. And uh, it wasn't just Dick, it was everybody. It was it was Miss Linda. It was every single one of the people that we had. They were not worried about giving their thoughts or ideas of what was making them successful. And that was so important to me. And I remember thinking when I got back and I explained my time to Deborah, and I said, this is an organization that we need to really uh, cultivate because I think they're interested in helping people. And so uh, <clears throat> I just went to a few conventions and then the next thing I know, uh, they asked me to serve on the board, which I was absolutely honored to be. Uh, we also feel like that uh, whether you're in the uh, dairy business or whether you're in the ice cream business, uh, there's people that help you. So then you need to turn around and then try to also be helpful to other people. Right. And whether right. it's serving on the Farm Bureau Board of Directors or whether on the Extension Council, being the chairman on that, uh, it was something. And I, and I remember going to my dad and I said, Dad, they, they've asked me to serve, to run through the chairs. And I said, I just don't know if I've got time to do it. And I'll never forget Dad. Uh, he said, he said, that is something he thinks, he said, I think that you need to do because not only are you going to continue to learn, but you're going to be able to help other people. And I think that's something that's very important yes. that you need to do. Yeah. So I did. I absolutely enjoyed it. There was a lot of times there was a lot of work, uh, but I always enjoyed the people, all the people I served with. I learned so much. 
and then you know as you serve George and you and you are involved you become more comfortable in what you do I see right. the 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 officers as they're coming up now I'll take one person and I hope she doesn't uh, take uh, offense at me mentioning her but Jill yes Jill I remember Jill when she first came on the board she just seemed a little timid She's seen, and, and, and people that know Jill, I mean, they might think that's kind of odd. But I'm going to say Jill, timid. Jill, I know she did <laughs> at the very beginning, but, but now I see a confident young lady, yes. and I am so excited for her. Yeah. So, and, and, but it's everybody that goes through the chairs. I think the majority of them, uh, they become such confident people, and, and they're willing to help other people. So we've got the new show coming up here uh, in October, here at the end of October. It's going to be, I believe, in Virginia Beach. What would you tell a new operator? Why? What would you tell them that they need need to need to go to see that show, and why? It's because Sorry because about that. that's all right. Because people are going to be there to help you, and if you've got questions, and the thing about it is, the answers might not always be what you want to hear. <laughs> we have we have talked to quite a few people at the dairy barn that are wanting to do something like we've done and we've told them we've told them the good and we've told them the bad we've right. told them like our our youngest daughter elizabeth i'll never forget we were sitting at the supper table one night and she goes if i hear the dairy barn mentioned one more time i'm gonna scream and i tell them i said you go to bed thinking about it you dream about it and it's the first thing that's on your mind the next morning yes, it, it is. is very time and life consuming now if you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for that, then go for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You can right. fail. And my gosh, we, we have failed many times in the ice cream business, ideas that we've had and we've tried, but it's all right. I have no problem with that. I'm always like, whenever I talk to a group of students and I tell them, try it, you're young. Worst you can do is fail. Go for it. That's where you learn your lessons. Well, that's, that's, you know, of course, in today's world where they have, where we hear so much about, e you know, immediate gratification, uh, take a pill for this, uh, buy that, uh, you know, your success uh, is a lifelong success, not an, uh, not an overnight success. And that's, and, and plus you said the family enjoys that too. And listen, don't, don't, don't get so caught up in the business that you lose sight of the people that you're working with right. and the people that you're working for. Um, the kids will keep you young. The and the customers, you can for Deborah and I, we we were very always uh, active in church, and the dairy barn has has really cut that back on us. But we've also found that our that our that our store can be a ministry. And I'll never forget the time I was I walked through, I was raking hay, and I came through the dairy barn to check on thing, grabbed me a drink, and started to run out, and I saw a, a, a customer that. He was a good customer of ours, and he was sitting over the table, and it just looked like that there was something wrong. And I just went over and said, hey, how are you doing? And he's like, my wife died yesterday. Uh. I'm like, oh, my God. So I sat there with him uh, for about, oh, I guess, 30 minutes and cried with him. Yeah. And um, you don't know what your people are going through that are coming through your door. So take, a, take that opportunity to get to know them and to see what's going on in their lives. And that guy, he's still a customer today. And that happened about 10 years ago. And um, I know there's a closeness now that we have. Right, right. And what's important about that, George, is he does not feel uncomfortable coming to me if he sees a problem with my business. Well, hey, George, we're all yeah. going to have problems with our business time yes. to time. And the problem is, is a lot of times we're so busy, we don't see them. And so those are kind of our people that help us out. Well, I think what you're also telling me is that there's, you know, you talk about your faith. You know, so many of us think that we only express our faith on Sunday mornings. I mean, what you're doing is you're actually living your faith every day. Absolutely. And I'll invite them to our church. I mean, I don't go overboard. I just say, hey, we've right. got a small country church over here about two miles. If you don't have a church family, we have a great group of people over there okay. that, that really care about the people, not about, it's not just about the church. Well, I think, you know, you're, you're an example, you know, you, you, you it's a, it's a hard life. It's, it's a fun life. I mean, you're, you're expressing your faith, your family, your business and your ice cream business. When I mean, you're able to roll all these life experiences into something that can, uh, that can matter for many people, like you said, with the gentleman you just talked to, 
So, Absolutely. you know, and I don't want to take too much of your time. I know I'm sure that the, 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 the gals on the milk house are looking forward to seeing you shortly. But... Hey, George, I got a robot now, buddy. They milk the cows now. Uh, <laughs> robot milks the cows. I do go out every morning about 545 and, and make sure, do some cleaning up around the, the, the barn and yeah, uh, yeah. make sure that all the cows have been through the robot and, uh, and then stir the pack. And there's still plenty to do, but uh, hey. I'm free here, buddy. It's a different Go ahead. Way. Well, good, good. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I, again, having the pleasure to see you at, uh, you know, at all the different shows and talk to you and Deborah. I, I've always been, you know, everybody that, who I talk to is, you know, we both talk to new new folks getting into business and they always say, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I said, you know, give give Carl and Deborah a call. And they said, well, will they talk to me? And I said, they, I said, they may not take your call immediately, but they will certainly talk with you. <laughs> Yeah, we will. And, and you've exhibited what the association is always about, is that, you know, the association's strength is its members who work together, like you said. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. think anybody, you know, I don't care if you're in the United States or around the world, which I think we do, and the NICA group have world, have members, but there's, you know, this business is a universal business. Uh, serving ice cream is a universal smile. It's a universal, You again, you coming from the dairy business, you love what you do. So... I've always told folks, you know, this is a great association. It's got a lot to offer. Uh, we're not without making mistakes, like you said. Uh, failure is not failure if we learn from our. That's exactly. You know? That's exactly right. right. So we got the show coming up, and I'm going to in, in this in the video blog. I'm going to put some links so people know how to get 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 a hold of that for the show up in October. But tell me about marketing because you've expressed a tremendous passion about marketing and, and recently you've had a tremendous opportunity to take advantage of something but you've you told me before many times that marketing has given you so much growth opportunities it, it, marketing is something i absolutely enjoy uh it used to be when i was milking down at the bar man my mind was thinking okay what can we do to promote the business and you know henry gentry does it fantastically henry gentry is is the spokesperson for his business. Henry Gentry is almost larger than life. And that's why people gravitate to Hen Henry. That's why people want to interview him and so on and so forth. He, it, it's, it's not acting, but you're, you're being a part. Right. And it's like me, I'm farmer Carl. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. And, and if the local television station wants to call me and they want to come out and do a, uh, do a, a little segment, man, what would that cost me to get that? And I mean, so, so that I'm kind of on their speed dial now. So if there's ever a dairy, uh, issue, or if there is a, uh, restaurant issue, or if there's an ice cream issue, I'm, I'm one of the first ones they call. I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't mind. I don't mind playing that part. I don't mind, uh, encouraging that because, because advertising has gotten to be so dead gone expensive. Yes. And I think what you talking about is is an e event that just it's fe it fell in our lap now i would like to say i had some influence in the eclipse coming right over our plate and we were dark for a minute and 50 seconds uh because if i did have some control i'd have another one about every month uh because it was absolutely amazing we really didn't do a whole lot of advertising for it. we put it on facebook that we would accept visitors to the farm and uh uh it, we started to see about a week out that this was going to get stupid. And uh, so we even came up with a little flyer because we thought that the cars would be coming in so quick. We couldn't give our spill, you know, like, okay, the dairy barn opens at nine o'clock. Uh, going to show you where to park, uh, hay rides, uh, farm tours, jumping pillow, everything. No, wait, so what we, time did they start pulling in? Well, of course, George, it was the eclipse. And we told... <clears throat> We told everybody first, first come, first serve. Oh my! <clears throat> so I got up to the dairy barn at four o'clock Central Time <laughs> <clears throat> that morning, and there was already three cars there. Oh my goodness! One from Louisville, one from Lexington, and a guy from Canada. Oh my! And also, <laughs> this is the best part: a television station out of Cincinnati, Ohio, Fox Channel 19. Somebody had contacted me the night before and says would you be okay to having a a satellite truck from channel 19 out of cincinnati of course you know me george i was like i'm fine i'm sure we can we can get him a place and so yep. he was already there at 3 30. oh my 
So George, it was like on channel 19 out of Cincinnati, which I also found out later went on WLW, the radio station, they were carrying some of the feeds. Yes. So he interviewed me about five times and I just, I ate it up. And so if you ever get a chance, go to our Facebook page, Cheney's Dairy Barn on Facebook, and you can go back about a week or so and you can see. Well, the cars really started rolling in in earnest about seven o'clock. Okay. And we told them, we said, the Dairy Barn will open at nine. We don't serve breakfast, but we will be ready to serve food. And at nine o'clock, there was 75 to 100 people at the front door and 75 to 100 people at the back door waiting to get in. So we had two people, one open the front door, one open the back door. We did the same. It was like a vacuum. Whoosh. Mercy. They all came in at once and they all got in line. And those kids, my kids, I tell you what, I love them to death. They did such a fantastic job. We had four kids in the kitchen and they cooked from nine o'clock to 115 okay. straight. Well, what was bad was, was I parked cars. I parked about 800 cars. We had about 3,500 people until about 12 o'clock. The eclipse was at 128, 127. And at 12 o'clock, we ran out of room to put cars. Oh my. And I told James Neal, who was, who was kind of showing them where to go up at the front. And I said, that's it, we're done. And so I went. And the kids told me, they said, we were going to stop serving food at one o'clock so the kids could go out. Our okay. kids could go out and watch the eclipse. Because, I mean, this is a once in a lifetime yeah. event. We didn't want them to miss it. And we had a line of about 100 people at 12 o'clock that were waiting in line for food and about 75 people waiting in line for ice cream. And so at 12 o'clock, we made the decision. The kids were, the managers were wanting to just cut in and say no more. And I said, no, you can't do that. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get in line at the end of the food line, which is all the way out at the playground. And I said, I'm going to go out there and get in line and I'm not going to let anybody else get in line. Okay. Well, that worked because as I got to the, it, to, I got to the counter, it was about 115. So our kids got through, they got to get out, they got to see the eclipse. The problem was, as soon as the eclipse was over, all those people that I had turned away jumped right back in line. And so we served from nine o'clock in the morning, except for about 15 minutes there during the eclipse until about five o'clock that evening. Oh, we mercy. had lines in ice cream and in food. It was absolutely amazing. And as soon as we got the ice cream line finally worked down, a motor coach pulled in from Hopkinsville where it was supposed to be ground zero. Right. They pulled in and they got in line. So it was like, Oh my God, the kids were like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it was a fantastic day, George. Uh, the event, you know, there's so many things that you did that are build up. Right. Uh, the eclipse. I would, I would, I would encourage anybody that has a chance if you're close to, uh, the actual happening right. to where it's total darkness. You need to try to go um, about a minute before it went totally dark. You got to realize there's 3,500 people out there and you could have heard a pin drop. Oh, wow. And then when yeah. it went total darkness, you can kind of see it on some of our drone video. Okay. Everybody started cheering. Everybody started clapping and hollering. I mean, it was just an absolute amazing event. And then, it started everybody as soon as the total eclipse was over every a lot of oh, about all but about 300 cars left so now we're in the mode of getting everybody off the property right so we did all of that the the television guy they actually brought another weather guy in and he stayed till 10 o'clock that night with the satellite truck but the one that got there at 3 30 that morning it took him eight hours to get back to cincinnati and which is about a three to three and a half hour drive. Right, right. Because the traffic was so bad. So that was something that was absolutely unbelievable. Biggest day we've ever had. Um, it was just an amazing day. Did social media play a large part of getting the word out or how did what do you Huge. Okay. Huge. I mean, we did at, we did no advertising. All on Facebook. Social media. Yeah. It was all on Facebook. And I mean, we've got twenty three thousand fans. Here's another thing we did. We did we had heard so many people in the area were charging $25 a car. Some people were even charging $100 a car to have a spot. 
Mm-hmm. And we said, we're not going to charge because we, we you know, we'll, we'll make some money on food and ice cream. Just the a little bit, before, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And so the night before, I'll be honest, George, I'm going like, I might have made a mistake here because it was starting to seem like we were getting calls all day long. And so I said, okay, we're going to ask for a $5 donation. If you've got it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. And so we set up a table out on the grounds where we could sell tickets for the corn maze, for the, okay. for the farm tour and for donations. And I think it, we didn't get money from everybody, but that was okay. I, it, right. it didn't bother me. I think we brought in about 3,500, almost $4,000 in donations. That helped me to offset the cost of bringing on other people. Right. But George, what it did, if you get an opportunity to go to our Facebook page and go to the messages, people were so appreciative that we did not jack up the prices. We actually lowered them on a couple of things. Okay. And people were so appreciative, gave us five stars on Facebook and just said, you know, we so appreciate you allowing our right. family to come to your farm and watch this once in a lifetime event. And that was very rewarding and meant a lot to us. Well, it sounds like you had a, a great, great, uh, great day and a great uh, development of new customers. Were you able to track the customers? From, you said they came from Canada and Louisville and, and I mean Lexington, <laughs> but were they, did you, was that the Canadian one the furthest or did you map that out? Or? George, I don't know. I didn't have time to talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm parking cars. My gosh. Um, I, I think the majority of the folks probably came from Ohio. Okay. Because uh, I've never seen, I know there was Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Maine, okay. uh, Ohio. There was a guy from Mexico called the day before. A guy from Switzerland was there the night before. Now, I don't know if he was in the States, probably visiting somebody. But uh, it was, and, and so the thing about it is, <laughs> George is Sunday was our busiest Sunday we'd ever had because people were coming in scoping out the joint to kind of get an idea of where to come the next day. Oh my. So you got and then also bit. the day before there was a, there was, they had something in Bowling Green that I took my trailer to. Right. And I think I, I, I did well there that day too, but there was a lot of people that were coming up and, and I said, well, where are you going to go watch the eclipse? And they said, well, there's a little dairy farm south of Bowling Green and we're going out there. And I'm like, I kind of held my hands up and they're like, that's you all. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and so I'll be honest with you. We had a blast with it, but I got to tell you, that's the tiredest I've ever been in my life. At a, it was a hot day yeah. and at 11 o'clock, about 1030. Um, I ran to the house and put on my running clothes and my old, and I had on my old big straw hat and I go walking out the door and my daughter says, you're not wearing that. And I said, I, I had just come out from having my head up underneath the uh, water for about five minutes. And I said, you dang straight I am. And so I was, I was good until we got through the rest of the day. Well, it sounds like you had a good time. And it's interesting because what I'm hearing you talk about all these different uh, uh, venues or offshoots of, of you know, you, you start into the ice cream business thinking you're just going to sell ice cream. And you think you're just going to sell it over the counter, a scoop here, a scoop there. And as you said, you really... When you start into this, you don't know what you don't know. But it, what I'm hearing from you is, is, is you've taken advantage of of in store sales, of mobile sales. You got, a, I know you got a trailer. And I know you got a couple carts. Uh, I mean, you you really do take it to the streets, don't you? It's it helps in your branding, and that's okay. I think is so very important with a new business that's starting up. And we did. We started our trailers the first year. Uh, we opened up, like I said, in October 2003. In 2004, we purchased a trailer. I don't know where I got that idea from, but we just felt like that was something. Right. And now we've retired that trailer, and we've got two other trailers. So we can have we can go to two different events on the same time. Um, I would recommend that people look at that very closely. Um, the two trailers are probably going to do about 100 to 125 thousand dollars in revenue this year. Um, our biggest event was a bluegrass festival in Orangeboro. And in, in one day, I think we did about $6,400. Uh, we've got the, uh, we made an ice cream for our local university and they named it the Big Red Rumble. And now we have the kiosk like you're talking about that we right. go in 
and we scoop ice cream at the ball games, which is great, great income during the, during the winter months, during basketball season, it's enclosed. People love ice cream when they're, you know, when they're watching basketball right. games. We're doing football games right now. We had, we did, had two kiosks at the, the local football, at the college, and, uh, and there's so many different places that you can go. There's money out there if you're willing to work for it, but I got to tell you, uh, Deborah does not like to take the truck and the trailer to events. She doesn't mind bringing them home. She's afraid she'll have to back it into some place. Okay. And uh, I tell anybody, if you can put a, if you can give me 18 foot, I can put my trailer anywhere you want. <laughs> so there's just, there's a lot of different opportunities in the ice cream business. And the thing I love about it is now at the university, my name is everywhere. Uh, at the football games, my name is everywhere. The trailer going down it's got cows on the side of it it's bringing the mood to you i mean it's it's making right. made fresh on the farm and these are driving billboards that are right. going everywhere right. and and i mean i just I, i'm i'm so tickled to death what we've gotten to the point now george is is i would do anything i would go anywhere if there was five people wanting ice cream i'd take a trailer not anymore i'm i'm more selective now and i only right. go to the places because i tell you what i'm 63 years old now and uh I just don't have the energy, I guess, that I used to have. Well, you got well. You have to pick and choose, and that's the way of life. Well, Carl, it's it's you know I appreciate this time, and we're going to come back and do some do some more of these over the next uh, you know many months in winter time. You know, both of us have been extremely busy. Uh, I mean, you've been busy down on a farm with so many different opportunities, and we've been you know I'm with a couple of different. Uh, I work with C Nelson, and we've been busy supplying sure. all the shops, and so. You know, I've taken like you. We've kind of taken a hiatus during the summer because we we enjoy our you know, the ice cream business. But you know, we're uh, the Nike show is coming up, and I'm looking forward to visiting with you. But more importantly, one of the things that I'm trying to do with these uh, interviews and these FaceTimes is is to provide uh, a mechanism or an opportunity to those individuals like you and Deborah when we first met. And like you just said, at six, you're 63. I, I'm turning 62. I'm not necessarily going to jump in my car like I did many years ago and drive from Ohio to Bowling Green and then turn around and come back the next day. I, I get wore out sometimes, but we can take this 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 medium that we call social media, get it out to those new people, and like you said, the result of this interview, the result of this conversation, like you said, is that we can provide them with a calm. I call it a calming effect. It can be done. Here's what it's going to take. Here's their success. You make the choice. Uh, and so many people are just looking for somebody to, if you will, that proverbial hug, uh, that understanding where you have come from, and the understanding, like you said, this is hard, but it's wonderful. If you enjoy people and if you enjoy working, then yes, you can be successful if you're prepared to do what's necessary. Now, the last thing I'm going to have to ask you. What, explain that shirt of yours. Well, what the hell? I can't even tell. What does it say? It says, it says Dustin's Day at the Dairy. I didn't even pause <laughs> that shirt on. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ice cream business also gives you great opportunities to give back. And uh, there was a young man that was in a college course at Western Kentucky University. And he's 21 years old, and he had a stroke. Hmm. And he's left, he's not able to walk. He's got quite a few disabilities. And so he did not have a van and he did not have a good wheelchair. And the people came to us and said, can you all help us do something for this young man? And so Deborah and I were like, yeah, what do you want to do? And so we had some meetings and we came together that we were going to have a silent auction, a live auction, and we were going to do a lot of different things that day to raise money. Okay. And we were tickled to death that day. We raised almost $6,000 Oh my! and were able to help him with a lot of other great people. Uh, if it would have been just us, it wouldn't have happened, but there was a lot of volunteers that came together that day and really put forth a lot of time and effort. And, and I tell you what, we're so tickled to death when he got that van, uh, handicapped accessible van that he was able to drive around and uh, that his parents were able to drive around. They had so much trouble 
because he couldn't do any of it himself. Right. And Deborah and I just felt led that that was something that uh, we were called on to do. That's wonderful. Uh, you sure have embodied uh, you know, a, a life of giving. Uh, the, you know, the Lord has blessed you and you in turn are blessing other yeah. people. Yes. So. I tell you, we, we've done probably about six or eight of those and most of them are for kids. And when you think about my kids are healthy, my grandkids are healthy. Right. And um, I would hope that somebody would help us if we needed help. So that's why we do it. Well, Carl, anything you'd like to say here before we wind it up? Uh, no. Thank it's you time so much. Work. Thanks for your time. We'll be talking to you soon. If I don't talk to you, I'll see you in uh, Virginia Beach. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. That's what I was going to. That was the last thing I was going to tell you. I talked to somebody about two months ago and they said, man, I can't wait for the weekend. And I said, what's happening on the weekend? He said, I get some time off. And I said, well, I'm waiting until November because that's when I get my time off because between the cows and the crops right. and besides the ice cream store, I know we got to move a bunch of heifers today. Tomorrow, I've got to take the trailer over to about, oh, it's about 40 miles away uh, to a, uh, a little, little field day they're having. And then Friday, I go to do Munfordville, Kentucky for the Civil War days. Saturday, we're at the Civil War days again. Um, we can't wait till NICRA. That's so in November. That we rest. We'll see you in November, my friend. Thank you Take so much. Good. Have a Thank good day. You. God yes, bless. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.